Hey, you guys. I am live this morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Mojo. It's Anna Gibbs, and I'm really excited that you could join me today. Thank you for being here on Zoom, uh, and thanks for watching through the live stream on the Facebook group, too. So I hope that you had a great weekend, and uh, this is always my highlight of the week. So I'm glad that I made the commitment to all of you to do this because it really gives me an opportunity to put some thought into topics and um, continue to be learning based so that I can, you know, learn new things to share with all of you. And um, I'm going to tell you that this morning's uh, conversation was inspired by a blog post I read a few days ago. So uh, it's always interesting how things show up. And uh, I think give me the content to share with all of you. So this morning, I want to talk to you about what we probably should have learned in school and didn't. <laughs> uh, and whether you uh, love school or not, or were a good student or not, I think we all agreed that there were a lot of classes and topics that we had to do or participate in that we're, not, we're just not even using that information and knowledge today, right? How many of you could agree with that? And so it's interesting uh, as I've come into adulthood and my career, and really probably 20 years ago, at least started to see and understand the importance of self-development and self-mastery and personal growth. And, and that it was important so that I could use the tools and create the mindset to have the things I wanted and to be more successful. I think that some people can almost overdose on personal development and uh, you know, be plugged into lots of podcasts and be plugged into books and classes. And I would be, you know, I would challenge them and ask them if they're they're really putting that information to good use, right? So my goal for Monday Morning Mojo is to provide you with tools and resources um, so that you can apply it into your life. And I'm very passionate about that. I'm passionate about helping people really stretch their limits and to examine more of their potential and to really start to create bigger visions for themselves and and really just create more a more fulfilling life so whether it's through your career your relationships um through you know the the business that you have or the things that you do within the community um for me i think life is is short and it is about living the biggest greatest life that you can that works for you not someone else so uh, that is why I became a coach and that's why I love to do uh, the things that I do. So let's talk about some things that I think we should have learned in school. And again, I read some, some of this in a blog and it, it got me thinking and I kind of added a few more things to the list. Um, but I think that, you know, when we think about how to live a fulfilling life and we realize that or accept the fact that our thoughts are creating our world. So if you're taking notes, that would be something I would write down right now. Your thoughts are creating your world, right? Your thoughts shape your reality. And so uh, that being said, then I think one of the first things we have to you know, understand is that we have to manage our mindset. And I don't remember ever really having that conversation in school. Now I'm old, you know, I'm going to be 50 this year. So maybe some of you who are younger can say you've had some of these conversations with teachers uh, and if you have, that's wonderful. When I went to school, we didn't talk about mindset, right? So if we can manage our mindset, um, then I think we have a, a greater opportunity at how we navigate life. And so, you know, I think if 2020 taught us anything that life is unpredictable and there are highs and lows. So it's even more important for us to know how to manage our mindset so that, you know, we have the right outlook and, and perception. Um, and, and I think in that it's, it's not always fooling ourselves or telling ourselves it has to be positive. We're all human. So sometimes our thoughts can be negative or limiting. That's normal. Um, the opportunity then is to understand that's what we're feeling and to move forward in a different way. So we can reframe our thinking into something that's much more empowering. And so, you know, when we look at what's going on around us, right, events, circumstances, from COVID to the political landscape, the economy, um, we could allow that to really overwhelm us or it could allow, if we let it, uh, it could start to tell us what we think our future is. And so I'm not in control of a lot of those things. 
uh, especially like politics, you know, um, sure, we can get involved in some ways in our community and in our local government and maybe have that grow into something bigger. Um, but again, you know, for me, I don't have control over those things. So I have to look at how to control my own outcome. And it starts with how I create vision for my life, how I process, you know, my goals and how I work towards achieving the things that I want. And so I think that, you know, we have to look at how to manage our mindset. And when we do that, it can, I can unpack it even further. So I would say the first thing is, is this concept of validation. And this default thinking that a lot of us fall into that somehow, or for some reason, we believe that our self-worth and our self-esteem is dependent on how other people view us. And, and I know I fell victim to that for, for uh, many years in my lifetime, and I'm sure I'm not alone, but see, we, we our self-esteem and our um, self-image is not dependent on other people's validation. It is centered and only dependent on how we see ourselves. And so I think that we have to look at opportunities to know more about our strengths, appreciate what we bring to the world, uh, practice some self-love and you know, develop the confidence that we have amazing skill sets and we have this amazing potential and yes, maybe there are times we may have to learn new things, but that we have the capacity to learn new things and that we have the capacity to figure things out. And so that confidence brings into, uh, that confidence that we have will bring us into so many more opportunities because we won't have as much fear. So there's a great quote that I found here by Mark Manson, true confidence is being more invested in your perception of yourself than someone else's perception of you. True confidence is being more invested in your perception of yourself than someone else's perception of you. Guys, don't give away your power. Don't hand this over to someone else. Don't think that your self-esteem is dependent on external circumstances or someone else's approval. Uh, this, this, I think, is really the core of how we can live a bigger life. And so, I think if we could have learned that in school, uh, imagine how, how, um, how many more things we might've been able to tackle or, or look into or accomplish uh, rather than uh, this endless quest to compare ourselves to other people, which ironically started probably in school, right? And so I think we have to have the courage to not always be liked. And we have to have the courage uh, to know that acceptance is really only starts and ends with us. If, if I can accept myself and I believe that I'm living my life according to my values and according to my rules and according to my goals and dreams, then it stands to reason not everyone's going to fit into that. A few months ago on Mojo, I did a topic called um, I'm not everyone's cup of tea and that's okay. You have to be comfortable with that. And you have to realize that those people who are meant to be in your world will find their way in because they're attracted by your authentic authenticity and they're attracted by your energy. When we are trying to live up to someone else's um, standards or, or uh, acting in a way that is seeking someone else's approval, we can't show up and be our true self. So it's just funky and weird. And, uh, and so I think that this is such a, a, an important conversation to have. Um, and, and I got to tell you, there's nothing more freeing than letting go of this, uh, than really letting go. And that doesn't mean that I don't get up every day looking to be great um, at what I do or put excellence into my activities. The difference is that I look to be better than I was yesterday. I don't get up thinking I have to be who you want me to be. I get up saying, you know, who am I? And I'm clear about that. It doesn't change. I mean, it can grow, but it's, it's not like every day I say, okay, today I'm going to work in this set of values because I think that's what the world wants. No, my values are mine. It's at my core. It's my, it's my navigational beacon. And that's where I'm grounded. And so I love and accept who I am. And uh, that, that is why I have the courage to step out and do some things that maybe other people 
look at with astonishment at times. <laughs> So I think, you know, um, there's this other quote here, I'm going to paraphrase, uh, it's a little longer, but it's basically saying that from the day we were born, the world tries to tell us who we are. And that oftentimes the story isn't true. So we need to understand and be taught how to live our lives according to what is authentic and true for us. Because when we don't, we just make ourselves ill we can make ourselves actually sick. And to say, uh, it's also a big waste of time, right? Such a time waster. If you could just put that time into really understanding who you are, maybe hiring a coach to work on identifying your strengths. Um, and, and that's, you know, something else too. A lot of this um, conversation this morning, you know, what we should have learned in school, you know, these are the things that we are seeking as adults, right? We're buying books and we're listening to podcasts and coming on things like Mojo and hiring coaches, which is great. And so I think that the opportunity is to realize we're not broken. We just need clarity oftentimes, right? So I like to attract people who want to hire me as a coach because they know that this is an opportunity for them to move forward and, and expand and, and for them to learn some more things about themselves that they can use to really create the, the goals that they have in their dreams. So um, this morning, I hope that you're inspired to take some of this and really dig into it. So I think that, um, again, what we, I wish we had learned in school is that we shouldn't apologize for who we are. Write that down. I will not apologize for who I am. If you can show up and be your authentic self, why would you have to apologize? Besides, who wants a world full of the same people? That sounds like a wacky sci-fi movie, right? It sounds like a bunch of, you know, zombies walking around. We, we should love and appreciate our differences and, and the different skill sets that we bring and, and the things that we love to do. Um, we should all be different, right? And so I, I think when we start to get into some logical thought, we realize just how much time we're wasting on a lot of this, right? So again, self-acceptance means that you have the courage to show up as yourself. That's what self-acceptance really means. And that you don't need anyone else's validation. Okay, so another thing I wish we had learned in school is I guess more along the lines of being yourself that it's okay not to be the coolest kid on the, on the playground. That, you know, being different is all right. Being a little eccentric, being a little bit smarter, being a little bit funnier, being a little bit goofier, um, that it's okay. And that you can really show up and, and just really put forward whatever that personality is and that it's okay. Uh, because that takes courage too. How about this other topic of we are enough? Where did we learn that we are not enough? Where did we learn that we have to constantly be looking for what's missing in our lives? And when you are focused on what is what you don't have, you can't really appreciate what you do have. And without having that sense of gratitude, I don't believe you get to move forward in a bigger in a big enough way. I believe energetically that the divine, that the universe will continue to open doors for you. And, and it always has your back. It always is there to support you for sure. And I believe that it will continue to open doors for you and provide you with more opportunity as you show your capacity. And I believe that when we take time to understand, connect and show gratitude, for all the wonderful things that we have in our lives and what is available to us, I believe that that abundant thinking creates more abundance. But when we think that we're not enough, we're not in gratitude. When we think that we don't have enough, we're not in gratitude. Therefore, we're in this scarcity mindset. And you can't think abundantly when you feel like you have the scarcity in your life. So I just don't know as a culture how we got how we got here, you know, because this is something that plagues or affects most people, honestly. If most people were to be really honest, they would tell you that we all struggle with this concept of not being enough. And I think that 
it comes, I'd like to think it comes from the fact that somewhere deep inside of us in our unconscious mind, we know in our, in our subconscious that we're really amazing, incredible, divinely created human beings. I want to believe that somewhere in here, we actually know that we have this vast potential. And so in our humanness, as we continue to grow and figure things out, I want to believe those two things are kind of conflicting with each other. And so therefore we think that whatever we're doing at this moment is not enough because somewhere here, we know that there's so much more we could do. So I would say my friends, take a deep breath and realize a couple of things. One, that at any given moment, you're probably doing the best you can because you're using the knowledge that you have at that moment. So when you know more, you can do more. So if you're striving for certain goals and milestones in your career, in your relationships, uh, in your personal endeavors, then take an assessment, just assess where you are, figure out this is where I am, this is where I want to go. What do I need to do to bridge that gap? Do I need to learn new skills? Do I need some other people to help me so that you can continue to grow forward, right? But it's about not, it's about accepting where you are in order to go forward, not to create this negative chit chat in your head about not being enough, right? And so I think that we have to, you know, really appreciate the growth that we see in a lifetime and appreciate the opportunities that we have to shift our perspectives, to learn new things, uh, to believe differently, right? Because our beliefs are, are really what is, is shaping our thoughts. And I said to you a little while ago, our thoughts create our reality or shape our world, which is true, but those thoughts come from our belief system. So I, I think that we can change our beliefs whenever we need to, uh, when we need to get more in alignment. And so I think that there's such an abundance in this world. There's just never ending flows of energy, information, resources, people. You have to be open to allowing that in but it starts with where you are right now and saying, I am enough. I, I accept who I am. I am grateful for where I am and I am ready for more. And I am ready for more. So another thought that I have here is happiness. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what your definition of happiness is because I, I would believe that it is very personal for, for most of us, right? Yet this pursuit of happiness uh, and wherever we've learned it, probably modeled it from someone, right? Um, I think that, you know, we, we should want to live a happy life. Um, and so my question to you is when you think about that, are you going inward and examining what brings you joy? Because when you can connect with and bring more opportunities to experience joy in your life, I think that brings happiness. This is another example of not comparing your outside, to, your inside, excuse me, to someone else's outside. In other words, whatever someone else is doing and however they're living their happy life may or may not work for me, yet why am I comparing myself to them, right? And so we see this all the time and, and even on social media, right? We have this filtered way of looking at each other's lives. I try to be pretty authentic. Um, if, if I'm saying it, it's probably what I'm thinking at that moment. Um, and I choose what I say and what I don't say. But I think that oftentimes we can start scrolling through something like Facebook and Instagram, and we can see other people's version of their life. And some of us may decide that that makes us happy or not happy. And at the end of the day, no one can determine your happiness but you, and no one can define your happiness but you. So again, what, what makes you happy? What brings you joy? And when you are focused on comparing yourself to other people, you're stealing your joy and you're giving away your power. All right. So another thing I didn't learn in school was how to take care of myself really in, in an emotional way. I, I don't remember going to a class that said self-love or self-care. Did you? 
Now, self-love, self-care, I've touched on this already, right? It's all about acceptance. It's all about accepting who you are and, and really loving and supporting yourself for your flaws, for your strengths. Uh, yeah, it can even be a little geeky when you look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love you, you're pretty, you're smart, whatever, whatever it is. You know, the way you would talk to someone else like who's your, you know, who, how do you talk to your children, your partner, your best friend, right? Are you encouraging and loving and supporting? Yet when we look at ourselves and if we were to really examine our, our self-talk, is it that supportive? Is it that loving? Is it that compassionate? Or are we trying to find every little flaw and really focusing on, I think, pulling ourselves down rather than lifting ourselves up? So self-love and self-care is, is so important to, I think, living a fulfilling life. Because if you're stuck behind these negative thoughts, you may never really come into the full expression of yourself. And if you can't come into the full expression of yourself, then you're not really able to use all of your skills, all of your gifts, all of your talents. Uh, and you may hold yourself back from really stepping out of your comfort zone and learning the things that may take you to another level. So I, I think that the opposite of self-love is self-criticism. And so my goal is to help you become more of your inner coach than your inner critic. And to help you really understand, you know, what self-care is. Now, I think a lot of times, you know, in the media and and in conversation, we think self-care is about a hot bath and, and exercise, getting a good night's sleep, eating right, you know, those things, which it, which it is, it is, but it doesn't stop there, right? Self-care is about creating healthy boundaries. Self-care is about, you know, really being aware of negative self-talk and, and working to reframe that. Uh, self-care is accepting ourselves and self-love is, you know, I think being supportive of ourselves when we might find that we make a mistake or that we're, we failed in something and, and to understand that that's all part of the journey and how we learn things. And so I think that self-care and self-love is about seeking joy and thinking abundantly rather than scarce, you know, thinking in, in terms of scarcity. So the relationship you have with yourself is truly the foundation to your mindset that's where it all comes back, right? So your mindset is just a reflection of how you're feeling and thinking about yourself oftentimes. And then that starts to create, you know, thoughts and feelings about everything else. So this concept of self-love, yesterday was Valentine's Day and I uh, put a post on Mojo about taking some time, I don't know how many of you saw it, taking some time to write yourself a love letter. And so if you missed it, just go back on to the Facebook page on Monday Morning Mojo and uh, it was yesterday's post. And I talked about writing yourself a love letter to really connect with that self-image, that positive self-image, expressing self-love. Tell yourself the things that you appreciate about yourself. Tell yourself, you know, remind yourself about how far you've come and all of your accomplishments. And remind yourself about the type of friend you are and how you show up in the world with people. And I think it's a, it's a great exercise that we should do all of us more often. Um, and so when you're faced with adversity, challenge, disappointment, is the self-love still there, right? So when you're looking to scale up in your business and you have big goals this year, which a lot of us do, you know, because we feel like, you know, 2020 taught us a lot of things. Some people were on pause for a little bit. Other people saw great success in their business. And so 2021, I think we all come into it with an anticipation for different reasons. And so when you think about uh, your goals and, and the challenge of getting there and all the things that you have to do, you know, being someone who can really support and appreciate themselves is going to be significant to your success. Uh, and so when there's challenge and adversity, maintaining that image of ourselves is what keeps us on track and really lets all these other things that we talk about fall into place. Um, and so, you know, the last thing I have uh, to say, uh, because I want to give you guys time if, if there's any thoughts or questions, you know, I've mentioned this um, abundance versus scarcity. And I think that's another thing that 
we haven't really been taught or we talk about, right? And so abundance brings more abundance. And if you're thinking abundantly, then you're thinking possibility. You're always thinking that opportunity is waiting for you, or if it's not, you'll create it. You're thinking that uh, where there's a will, there's a way, basically. And if you're in a scarcity mindset, you're automatically in this, this loop of, I can't do that because. I, I shouldn't do that because. This won't work out. Uh, you know, I don't have this. I don't have that. That's what a scarcity mindset is really about. And an abundant mindset, even if we don't know how to do it yet, we just believe we're going to figure it out. And I think that that is also a key to living life out loud and really being someone who can can achieve their goals. So uh, a lot of stuff this morning that I wanted to throw at you, just all these thoughts about, you know, what we, I think, are seeking in terms of learning as adults, that imagine if we could have learned them as children. So if you have children in your life, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, your best friend's kid, whoever, can you be a role model for this? Can you take the time to actually teach the people, the young people in your life, how to think abundantly, how to love themselves, how to come from a place of self-acceptance, how to really understand what it means to step into the full expression of yourself, uh, to, to realize it's okay not to have all the answers, but that you have the ability to figure it out. See, that's important. I don't have all the answers, but I know I can figure it out. Right. I can either seek knowledge. I can seek support and help from other people. There are resources available to me. And so that is what brings the confidence about. So imagine if you could be that role model for someone else. So I know I have a few of you on Zoom here this morning. Thank you for joining me. It's always nice to, to be able to chat with you live. And to my uh, peeps on Facebook, please use the comments. I do go back and look at them and I'm happy to chat with you there too. Any comments or questions or ahas from this morning's Mojo session, the things we didn't learn in school? Uh, I apologize for coming a little late. I was actually outside running with the dog. I had to get back in here, but I wanted to ask about the comment you made on the um, abundance. Um, the opposite perhaps is benign neglect in terms of how folks function. Is there any thoughts on, you know, how so when that you slips? say benign neglect, what do you would expand on that for me, Jill? Um, I think sometimes the work is hard, as you yeah. attest. I think sometimes there's no solutions that's immediate. Nobody might not have the same experiences. So instead of doing anything, ben benign neglect said, let me just wait it out. Mm -hmm. Let me just put it on hold not knowing that that just percolates the same experience? Yeah, so that's a great question. So I believe that time is not enough to make change, right? So I think a lot of times people think, well, in time I will grow, in time it will get better. And me, it may, but I think it's such a gradual change um, that we have to understand that we have to seek out information, we have to seek out support, we have to seek out help. So I do believe that there are times when people, uh, so we have a different terminology, uh, different like coaching paradox that we use. So I think there are times when you have this, um, this subconscious, um, and it's a different term, but I'll use the term ignorance. Let's just say like, there are things you don't know and you don't know what you don't know. But once you become aware, that there's a gap. Once you become aware that there's a gap, what are you doing to take a stand for yourself to, to get the support, get the help that you need to move forward, right? So yeah, there, there's definitely times when we don't know what we don't know and we might be neglecting something because of that. But I think really when we say neglect, it's more, it's more um, on purpose, right? You, that's a choice. So I think it's important that we separate those two things out. So yes, there are times when you don't know what you don't know, but once you become aware of it, what are you going to do about it now? And that's when you have to seek out the information and support that will help you move forward. Yeah. Okay. You know, why well, struggle, right? Because that, right. that could be another topic for another Monday morning, right? The difference right. between 
a victim mindset and a surviving mindset. And then the next level that a lot of us don't talk about is a thriving mindset. You know, I don't want to just be a survivor. I want to thrive, right? So there's a really, I think, a distinct difference between the way those three people think. And so this victim mindset is, you know, where you're aware of some things that might be holding you back, but you stay stuck there, right? So now we have to make a decision about that. Good question. Yeah. It's like stalling. It's the stall. Yeah, it could be. I mean, that's a whole, it could be self-sabotage, right? Right. So, yeah. you know, when, when we are aware of a behavior that is not supporting us, when we know of something that is limiting us, uh, and we don't do anything about it, and we actually stay stuck in a behavior pattern of perpetuating that, that same thing, then that's self-sabotage. Right. Right. So we have to, you know, understand and recognize it, be compassionate with ourselves when we do, and get the support we need to change the way we're thinking, change what we're doing, so we get different results. Got it. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Morning. <clears throat> I love this topic. Um, and I do agree with you. I wish that this is something that we do focus on in school because <clears throat> especially teenagers, and I see it a lot at home, it takes a lot of confidence to show up as your authentic self. And I think For it's sure. something that I've learned over time now that I'm in my fifties, that people are drawn to people who are authentic versus someone who's just trying to be another, you know, same face in the same crowd type of thing. For sure. So, I, you know, I, I think it's really important. And that goes right along with that self-talk of, you know, speaking to yourself as if you would speak to your best friend or your spouse or your parent or child. It's, um, I think it's really important. And I'm glad you brought all this up. It was a good, you know, reminder for me to take all these things and not only that, but to pass it along to others as well. Beautiful. I love it. You know, and that's what being a leader is. It's, it's, you know, a leader is not a title uh, in a company. It's really about being someone of influence. And so yeah. I love that. And we're all leaders and it's just how we decide to show up. And, um, you know, a lot of what, what I talked about this morning has been sprinkled into other mojos, right? Because we keep coming back to this core principle that it's really, you know, your life is determined by, you know, your beliefs, because that's what shapes your thoughts. And your thoughts become the words that you say and the actions that you do. And, and those results that you're getting are, that's your life, right? So it comes right back to how you believe and how you think. And it's the most important part of that is how you think and believe about yourself. Yeah. It, it's all, you know, and it took me time to realize that too. You know, I, uh, as many of you do have, a, I have a story too that I'm sure I can share at some point and probably will through a Mojo platform um, that, you know, shaped my thinking too for a long time and wasted a lot of my time being stuck in the loop of, you know, self-sabotage and limiting beliefs. And, you know, when I was able to do the work and it, it, it is work, it is not just okay, this is awesome. I heard this great topic on, you know, Mojo with Anna Gibbs. And now tomorrow, my whole life's going to be different. Yay. It's, it doesn't quite work that way. You have to do the work. And sometimes it takes, you know, a coach and other people to help you with the accountability too. Uh, yet you're worth it. You are worth the work. Yeah. You are worth the work. You, you are the person you're going to spend your whole life with. <laughs> I mean, think about it, right? You are the one you're always with you. You're always going to be there. Spouses may come and go. Children grow up and start their own lives. Parents will come and go. Friends may change. Jobs may change. Blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's always, I'm always with me. Yep. And so as I continue to understand more about me and learn who I am, doesn't it stand to reason I should be my own best friend? That's what this is about. It's caring enough about your best friend to want to really live this great, great, exciting life that I believe is, is available to us. It's all right there. You just have to start to reach out for it. So I thank you for joining me this morning, everyone. If you have any other thoughts or questions, feel free to reach out through the Facebook page anytime. 
we can continue these conversations beyond, you know, six uh, or what, what time is it? 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and uh, I, I look forward to really creating that community on the Mojo page too. I love to see you talk to each other, talk to me. So make sure you use that. And I really appreciate you joining me this morning. Uh, as always, you can find this and all the other Mojo episodes on my YouTube channel. And if you find that this is really changing your thinking and impacting your life, I would love for you to spread the news and share this with other people. So please invite them to join the Facebook page. Uh, that's step one, because then everything comes from there, all the information, all the resources. And um, you know, I'd love to, to have them be a part of the group. So thanks so much. Have an awesome day. And don't forget to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Thanks, Anna. Bye. Bye.